Hello and welcome back to another episode of Political Agenda with me, PJ Thumb. I am wearing a blue and white batik shirt, sitting with two other people in front of a black table and in front of a map of Southeast Asia. We have a great show for you today. Uh, Ritaza Chatterjee is here. Did I pronounce that right? That's great. right. Fantastic. <laughs> Phew. Uh, but before we begin, as always, this is a production by New Narrative. And if you'd like to learn more about New Narrative, please go to newnarrative.com slash hello. And if you'd like to support what we do, if you enjoy what you hear today, you'd like to see more of it, hear more of it, uh, please do join as a member at newnarrative.com slash join or donate at newnarrative.com slash donate. So now, as Where always, joining us today, go, my co-host, Editor-in-Chief of Wake Up Singapore, Sean Francis Han. Hello, Sean. How are you today? Hi, yeah, I'm doing great. I'm really excited to get into this one because we are talking about mental health, which is an issue that, you know, has just seen so much awareness, so so much news, so much information come out about it. Um, and as somebody who's had like a lot of friends and a lot of people around me deal with and struggle with mental health issues, I mean, this this is something I think a little bit more personal is something that I'm quite interested to get into. But before we get into that, I'm wearing a cream shirt uh, and my, you know, the usual basics that I'm always wearing and my pronouns are he, him. PJ? Did I not say that earlier? No, you yeah. Oh, my, yeah. pronouns are, my pronouns are also he, him. Sorry. Yes. All right. So let's get into it. Um, we are joined here with Reeds. Hi, Reeds. Can you tell us what you're wearing and what your pronouns are? Hi, I'm Reeds. My pronouns are she, her. I am wearing an off-white shirt with watermelon prints on it. I love it. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> I really love it. But let's not get into that. Let's get into a little bit more on who you are. Who are you as a person? How did you get into mental health issues? What led you there? I wish I did have to get into it, <laughs> <laughs> into mental health issues. Mm -hmm. um, so the way it started was um, I was in uni and um, that's when I first started seeking professional help mm -hmm. for mental health. Um, and it wasn't that, I mean, uni contributed to it. Mm -hmm. um, and in university, you know, I was struggling. Uh, but it was a lot of past trauma coming up for me mm -hmm. um, in terms of um, sexual violence that I'd faced, abuse and things like that. Um, and uni was the first place where I was able to name all of the trauma that I'd been carrying. Mm -hmm. And I was able to do that because I was surrounded by a lot of black and brown women and non-binary people. And um, they were talking about all of these things. And I was just like, mm, okay, uh, maybe this, like, this is also my life. Mm -hmm. um, and it became like not just an individual issue. It became like, oh my God, this is like a collective issue. Like a lot mm -hmm. of people are going through this. Um, and yeah, and then seeking help at uni was very normalized. Everyone was doing it. Okay. Um, which, so which university is this that we're talking uh, about? So I went to Oxford. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> the alumni club here, but yeah. Yeah, so, and everyone was doing it. it was, I wish it was something cool, like, oh, you know, I smoke, that's cool. But it was, it was therapy. Everyone was going to therapy. So I was like, therapy's cool. Okay, let me try it out. And yeah, that's when... Um, I, 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 that's how it started for me. Mm -hmm. And, but apart from like medication and therapy, what was really like crucial to my journey was mm -hmm. the community I was with. Okay. And okay, can I just jump in here? Where, mm -hmm. where does the community come in? Because I have this impression where mm -hmm. mental health is you go to a therapist, you speak one on one, and then you go get pills. Mm -hmm. Where's the, where's, where does the community come in here? So I would, I, I would never, you know, given the upbringing that I have, you know, Asian mindset or whatever that is, I would never go to therapy because mm -hmm. that's seen as a sign of failing, right? I failed. Oh, yeah. I'm not strong <laughs> enough to cope on my own. Then mm -hmm. I have to go to therapy. Yeah. Um, but it's because people around me, the friends that I had, mm -hmm. um, they were going to therapy. And they started telling me like, hey, like, you know, this is affecting you to a point where like, you know, this is actually like, Affecting your life, affecting your relationships, mm -hmm. and so that's they kind of convinced you. That's what it. pushed me into therapy. It All wasn't right. like one day I woke up and I was like, "Therapy sounds cool. Let me just go." You know, it wasn't like that. Okay. Yeah. So you have 
you know, you have had experience with therapy, you've had experience with medication, right? But you've started this very interesting project, which is sort of an alternative to that, right? Which is mm -hmm. a new solution, a new response to mental health issues. And that new solution is called Your Hitler. So can you tell us a little bit about, a bit about what is Your Hitler? Okay, firstly, I want to caveat that with mm -hmm. saying that it's not an alternative to therapy mm -hmm. and medication, um, but it is, it is a community. Mm -hmm. And Your Hitler is basically a platform that we created mm -hmm. um, to amplify marginalized voices. Okay. Um, and we did that because um, when I came back from university, I to, back to Singapore, mm -hmm. I was looking for community, you know, and I was looking for people who kind of understood mm -hmm. what I was going through. Um, and I couldn't really find that. Um, so I... And everywhere I looked, there was a lot of talk about mental health. Mm. Like everyone was talking about it. Ministers were talking about it, you know. Um, but it was always either like one in five people in Singapore have a mental health issue. And then it's black and white, you know. It mm -hmm. was like very like trauma porn. Mm -hmm. Or it was super like... I am a person in recovery. Mm -hmm. I have gotten through my mental health issues and now I'm a productive member of society. Mm -hmm. So it's very inspiration porn. Yeah. And I saw that binary and I was just like, I'm not any of these people, mm -hmm. you know? That's, that's not human. Yeah. And so I wanted to create a space where we could share our narratives mm -hmm. um, in a very human way. Mm -hmm. um, and it... What I also noticed was that, you know, people were just talking about depression and anxiety, mm -hmm. uh, which are the more palatable yeah. um, mental illnesses mm -hmm. because, you know, you can relate to having anxiety. You can relate to, to being anxious. You can, you can relate to being depressed, I mm -hmm. guess, at points in your life. Uh, but no one was talking about the seemingly unpalatable um, mental illnesses like borderline personality disorder, and things like that, schizophrenia, because these are unpalatable, right? These are ugly. You cannot turn these into trauma or inspiration porn so easily. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I noticed this huge gap. And then I was like, hmm, we just need a space where we can tell our stories on our own terms. Mm -hmm. um, and where we can just put our own human narratives out there, you okay. know? So, so that's how, yeah. If I can, if I can jump in. So it's, it's very much about sort of normalizing the idea of uh, mental health illnesses. And that's what the community does for you, right? And it, 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 that's what I'm, I'm getting from what you're saying. And um, the, the role of norms in how we address mental health illness is something, you know, that I'm, I'm very curious about listening to you. Um, and do we see... Um, I, I mean, I know you're, you, you haven't, you, you're not like an academic and haven't done research, um, but um, other societies where mental health discussion and, uh, is, is sort of far more normalized and how does that affect the, the overall health of the population? Um, you know, do, do we, is there, a, is there, are there comparable societies where these things, where uh, we are able to or the members of that society are able to talk about uh, mental health issues a lot more openly. It's become more normalized. Mm -hmm. And consequently, you can actually see uh, or some sort of measurable effect in the well-being of the population. Mm. Well, I can't, I don't know if there are comparable mm -hmm. societies, but that is a community that we are trying to create at right. Your Hitler, mm -hmm. where these things are normalized. Mm -hmm. And we are trying to make mental health more than just an individual problem mm -hmm. because it's so individualized, right? It, it's very much like you can, you are struggling because you cannot cope because you're not resilient enough. Uh, but what we are trying to do at Your Hitler is that we are trying to really tackle the systemic causes, mm -hmm. which are the root causes of, of mental health issues. I mean, what I mean by that is that, you know, is not just about how you react to things, but it's about who you are as a person, how you navigate the world. So if you are living from paycheck to paycheck yeah. and you have to deal with financial precarity, that causes a huge amount of stress. If you are a brown person in this country and you are constantly having to live with racist microaggressions, mm. which are endorsed by the state, that is going to be stressful. Mm -hmm. um, if you are... If you have access to your basic needs, if you have access to healthcare, if you have access to employment, you know, if you have, like, if you have an, if at your job, you 
get respect and dignity. If you're facing violence every day because of your gender, your race, your sexuality, all of this, these things play a part in your mental health. So it's not just... It, mental health doesn't just exist in a vacuum. Mm-hmm. What we're trying to say is that, you know, it is not just a clinical problem. Like, you know, there are, there's something wrong with your brain, but it's a social problem. Mm-hmm. And with social solutions, so we need to dismantle everything. Mm-hmm. Um, capitalism, racism, you know, all of these things in order to have a world which cares about our mental health. Hmm. Yeah. I, 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 I love that. I love that message because I think a lot of times uh, mental health, you know, people coming into it who are not familiar with mental health tend to think like, oh, it's, you know, it's like a, um, it's like a brain defect or a neurochemical imbalance, right? When kind of ignoring the fact that there are systemic and structural reasons uh, for it, right? But I okay. I, I want to pull it a little bit back into your head, lah, for a moment, mm. right? Which is, there's a website, there's a Facebook page, right? Um, what goes on? What goes on there, right? What's happening? So uh, we also have an Instagram where we are more active. Mm-hmm. Um, so essentially, what we're trying to do is build community, right? Okay. Uh, so before COVID, this was a lot easier. So every month we would have a community gathering. Uh, where anyone can join. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we just do random things like uh, have board game night or a Halloween party. Mm -hmm. And um, other than that, there's also people who send us stories Mm -hmm. that they want um, and we, that they want to publish Mm -hmm. and we put that on the website. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just a lot of it, we we don't really do one thing. We do everything. Okay. So whenever there, so we also do like workshops. We've done a few workshops and healing sessions. So every time something really racist happens, like for example the brown face incident. Oh my god. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and you see all of that, right? Mm-hmm. And there's so much like news about it and it affects people ment- people's mental health so mm-hmm. we do like healing spaces where brown people can come together and just have like a space of of like rest and being together mm-hmm. um, we also do community accountability so we do we facilitate sessions on community accountability and we just do everything uh, so before the elections this year we released um, This was a big thing for us because we were like, hmm, you know, some of us, we were like, you know, we should go out there and we should say, like, don't vote for the ruling party. Mm -hmm. And then other people were like, yeah, but, you know, like, is it going to affect our safety? Because, you know, are they going to come after us? We Mm -hmm. don't know that. So we were afraid. Um, And then other people were like, but, you know, if we don't take a if we don't take a stance now, then when are we ever going to take a stance and Mm -hmm. things like that? Um, And so we just took our discussion and mm. we put it out there mm. yeah and so it's really about like showing the kind of ways the relationships that we're building with each other mm-hmm. and kind of making it the norm nice so yeah. there's not like one main thing that your Hitler is it's a bunch of different things like workshops healing spaces articles yeah. narratives so okay so so it's really about building that community through whatever means is available yeah. I, I okay okay now so now I've got a great sense of your Hitler and PJ kind of hinted at this just now, right? But what is the what is the mental health situation in Singapore, mm-hmm. right? I mean, institutionally and culturally and ideologically, what does it kind of look like? I have a bit of a sense that ideologically, it's bad, right? I mean, we Asian parents, I can relate, you can relate, um, you know. But yeah, what 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 is that landscape like? Okay, okay, I could go on forever, but I will start <laughs> <laughs> with. Um, like I talked about this just now, how mental health is very individualized mm-hmm. and it o- it is also very depoliticized. Mm-hmm. So what your Hitler, we have a manifesto and when we were, that was the f- one of the first things we did. Mm-hmm. And in our manifesto, we put it out there that we want to make mental health a political issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, because when you, that's the way a lot of things get done, right? You just make it depo- like apolitical and when everything is a mental health issue, you know, labor rights are a mental health issue, civil liberties are a mental health issue, poverty is a mental health issue, all these things are mental health issues. And that's why we call ourselves a mental health collective, because we want to do resistance work for all of these issues. And we care about all of these issues, right? Uh, in terms of the landscape, hmm. hmm. <laughs> okay, let's start off with the institutions. What's so going on there? We have one big 
IMH. You know what's yes. what's happening there. Um, so and the private private stuff as well. That's so to me the private survey. stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's very very expensive. Mm-hmm. So I'll share my own. Uh, for a therapy session, I paid two hundred forty dollars for what? an wow. hour. For an hour. This um, is just. What does it come with pills? Or? No, it does not. Oh my god! <laughs> okay. um, and then for the medication that I take, uh-huh. it is three hundred, uh, three hundred, three dollars and sixty cent for a pill that I take every day. What? And that's just one of the pills. This is private. Yes. Wow. So it okay. is very expensive, and I am obviously coming from a position of great privilege mm-hmm. that I can afford this. Mm-hmm. So that's the the private. Like a lot of people can't even touch that, mm-hmm. right? And then there is our public healthcare system, mm-hmm. which is a different ball game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the The waiting times are very, very long. Okay. So I've had friends who went, they finally decided to seek help. They wanted to get medication and they were, they went to a polyclinic and they were in, in a state of great distress, mm-hmm. you know, and they were given an appointment two months later. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Wait, two months. Two that could months. be after like, a lot of damage exactly okay and that's just is it bottleneck that's the i I mean i'm not sure what it is okay yeah and with from what i've heard about public health care it is a hit and miss Mm -hmm. based uh for what professional you get Mm -hmm. because a lot of the your hitler community a lot of us are queer a lot of us are brown you know a lot of us are marginalized in like very specific ways Mm -hmm. so you could go in to uh, you let's say you've waited two months, you know, now you have an appointment and you go in and the professional who is attending to you, mm-hmm. they could be very racist or they could be not queer affirming. Mm. There have been people who have been to, you know, public healthcare professionals who have said that you are depressed because you're trans. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Um, and things like that. So it, it's it's you end up going to an institution to seek help, but it ends up really traumatizing you even more yeah so, i mean how does that okay now we, okay let's not get into that that's a big that's a big structural if, if i can um, can you can jump in you're reminding me of our conversation with loon mm-hmm. from what was it about two months ago now um who was a guest on the podcast and she talked about the problem uh being a bit you know even more insidious than that in that uh individuals within the system may want to help you uh, they may not care that you're trans, but the system pressurizes you very much to conform to certain boxes. Mm. And so her experience uh, was not so much that individuals cared or not whether she was trans, but they, that they were highly incentivized and the system as a whole really wanted her to fit into one of the conventional boxes that the government has prescribed. And that's really... Uh, far more difficult to resist because you, you, you might be able to reason with a person on an individual mm-hmm. level, but how do you re- reason with a system mm-hmm. that is so massive and multi-layered and complex and, and um, dehumanizing, mm-hmm. right? So it's, it's, it's even more, you know, so when, when you talk about that, that these sort of issues, um, it occurs to me that you're entering a mental health system which doesn't want to acknowledge uh, a lot of different ways in which people live mm-hmm. um, and that is not just in terms of gender or sexuality but uh, as you mentioned earlier uh, it, 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 is, it drives all of us to be quote unquote productive members of society to be economically efficient economically productive in very specific ways which contribute to GDP and if you don't fit into that, they really pressure you to fit into that. And you're not a good person unless you fit into that. And mm. how on earth, if you're, you know, if you have mental health issues, how on earth do you deal with with that? So, mm. yeah, this is just, mm. you know, m- and thinking all of this just occurs to me listening to. What a- you're and that brings up the, the 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 second point here, which is, you know, the cultural landscape in Singapore regarding mental health and mental well being. So, what would you say that that is? What what would you say the cultural or ideological landscape is like regarding mental health? Mm. I mean, like, before I move into that question, like Mm. what PJ said, like, you know, you are having to reason not just with a person, but a whole system when you're going in to seek care. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And that's just so much for someone to take on. And you don't even have to be someone in distress or someone like with mental health issues. You just have to be a person to go in there and have to fight for your care like that. Mm-hmm. To come up against so much resistance. Um, that already in itself is a lot to carry. Mm-hmm. And also we don't want professionals who don't care if you're trans, you know? Mm-hmm. Because being a trans person, for me, being a brown person, the way I navigate the world, being brown affects a lot of it. So I don't want you to not care that I'm, I'm, I'm brown. I want you to know the specific ways in which racial trauma manifests for me navigating this country in a brown body. Like mm-hmm. that's, yeah. So it's not just about being apathetic to my identity, but also but being queer affirming, being racial trauma informed to know specifically how oppression affects my mental health. Mm-hmm. Right. Would you say that that um, at at a private clinic, you know, the, the, with, with with your with I mean your your current uh, therapist or your current setup, are they are they affirming of of the different intersectional identities that that, that you inhabit? Yeah, so I I requested for someone okay. who who was and which is something not a lot of people know is that mm. you can request okay um and to for someone with specific you know trainings with specific specializations and you can request for that all right um but it is difficult to find that's okay. why I'm paying two hundred forty dollars for an hour all right. um yeah but in terms of the cultural mindset right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um when you make something an individual problem. Mm-hmm. When it's so individualized, you will focus on anti-stigma campaigns, mm-hmm. right? Which we see on our MRTs and our buses, um, and but it's not just about bias here. Mm-hmm. It's a systemic issue, right? So let's say I am an employer, and I think that you know I'm worried about hiring mentally ill people into my company, mm-hmm. and my company makes it okay. The laws of this country make it okay so that I do not have to hire this person. Mm-hmm. And it's not just okay, it's just normal, Mm -hmm. you know? And then that practice, that kind of mindset becomes the norm, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that is what happens in this country. Mm -hmm. And then, so now me applying, so that actually translates into, like, a systemic exclusion Mm -hmm. of mentally ill people, of disabled people Mm -hmm. from employment, right? And then, let's say I, a mentally ill person, am applying for a job. And there's an option to disclose my illness, why would I do that? I won't get the job, right? Mm -hmm. And if I, let's say I do disclose and I get the job, highly unlikely, but let's say I do, what if it's outed to all of my colleagues? Mm -hmm. What if I get harassed for it, Mm -hmm. you know? So why, there's there's so much fear Mm -hmm. around disclosure and we are telling mentally ill people like, you know, it's okay to seek help and and we're placing all the burden of seeking help, of disclosing everything on the mentally ill person, on the marginalized person, Mm -hmm. instead of telling employers like, hey, you know, I'm not trying to change your mind here, but let's put in an anti-discrimination legislation Mm -hmm. where you are not allowed to discriminate by law. Mm -hmm. You know, that is, that would be a step forward, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess I want to ask you, how, what are sort of the tangible, you know, I get a sense, I get a sense of it, but what are some of the tangible or more manifest ways in which your Hitler has helped individuals in the community? Mm. I wouldn't say that we set out to help individuals, mm-hmm. um, but in the way, help is a very hierarchical word, I mm-hmm, think. Mm-hmm. Um, what we're trying to do is just build a community where we can survive together, mm-hmm. you know, where we we exchange information, we exchange resources, and we are finding ways to like navigate the system together, navigate this country together. Um, yeah, so that's essentially what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, just coming together. We, we actually have a Facebook group, and um, every time someone re- wa- is looking for like a therapist who is very specific, like you know, childhood trauma, that kind of thing, they just put it on the Facebook group, and then other people just jump in like with suggestions and everything. Mm-hmm. So it's a very like organic community, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of resource sharing, and um, just building relationships, essentially. That's what, what we're trying to do. We're not, I mean, in terms of changing the system, we are the ultimate goal of your Hitler, I say this and people laugh every time, is to dismantle capitalism. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is the ultimate goal because the work doesn't end with us. We mm-hmm. want the work to keep going on and on and on. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so we are doing it in a very specific way of like building community, mm-hmm. of making people realize that, you know, it is not you. 
it's not you that it not your fault that you're struggling. It is a systemic issue. We really believe that you know it's it's not people failing; it's their environments failing them, mm-hmm. and that's something that we carry with us. We try to practice that, um, and. In terms of our community, we're also trying to practice new ways of relating to each other. Um, and I think I heard about this during the mutual aid episode, which was really, really like heartwarming for me. But we're also trying to practice ways to relate to each other in that are anti-capitalist, mm-hmm. you know, where we view each other as, as human beings. Yeah. So we don't work on deadlines. We don't have hierarchies. Mm-hmm. Before every team meeting, we come together, we share a meal, we talk about our our weeks, we cry, we laugh, we drink together. Sometimes we just throw the agenda out the window mm-hmm. uh, and we, we, just, we just like to be together. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, in Singapore especially, it seems like you always have to come together with a purpose, you know, to, to do some kind of work, especially in the activist scene, to collaborate in some ways. But we just come together because we want to. And there's value in that. Yeah. So, I mean, the converse or the... the yeah, so, so conversely, um, how has your Hitler benefited yourself? <laughs> yeah. Your Hitler has changed my life. Nice. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the message that we get from a lot of activists, that their, their activism is... is rooted or at least has a big part to play in the fulfillment and the, you know benefiting themselves so how is that how has that benefited you i mean for me i i navigate the world as a queer brown woman mm-hmm. right and there are a lot of stresses every single day and you know it, it, it's difficult to exist in a world like this in a country like this when so much is happening mm-hmm. your hitler is a space where i can go to rest mm-hmm. to breathe It's also a space I can go to organize Mm -hmm. and to act and to be angry Mm -hmm. and to use that to drive me in my activism. Mm -hmm. And it's also a space I can go to get drunk and ugly cry Mm -hmm. in front of all my friends. So it's it's not just a space where it's a space to be human. And that's what I hope we can provide to a lot of other people we hope other people can come and build this space with us Mm -hmm. yeah okay I I wanted to sort of uh, you know this has been on my mind for a little bit you know at the start of this conversation right you talked about how there's like this trend now where politicians or companies or uh, institutions they'll come up with this either like misery porn or inspiration porn you know and as a sort of outsider somebody who's kind of blessed who's sort of more or less neurotypical you know you look at that and you say well this is pretty disingenuous here Mm -hmm. right you know because you're not doing anything structural or systemic you don't really put your heart into this but yeah how does that affect um how does that affect the larger culture what are the 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 ramifications of this thing right i can only just see it's bullshit right but what is the underlying damage that's being done here i mean when institutions are already so violent and damaging will putting will doing 25 push-ups a day (laughs) really add to the damage i don't know maybe i don't know today because i haven't done my 25 push-ups today so i i don't know maybe i'm feeling a bit down Mm. and that's on me right i didn't do my push-ups um but this to me to a lot of us this kind of like just raising awareness Mm -hmm without any systemic change, without any policy change, anything, anything at all, it's just virtue signaling, right? Like, uh, you know, young people care about mental health, so let me just throw in mental health. I don't really know what it means, but I'll just throw it there, throw it in there and do something that Mm -hmm. kind of resembles something Mm -hmm. and hope for the best, that, you know, I care about this issue. Mm -hmm. When you're not even listening to mentally ill people, and we are right here, we are very loud. Mm -hmm. And if you look at... um, when it was posted, the 25 push-ups challenge, Mm -hmm. if you look at the comment section, young people went off. Mm -hmm. They were in there. (laughs) But were the comments taken into consideration or were we just seen as troublemakers? Mm. You know? So we we went in there and we were like, you know, this is not right and this is exactly what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of people expressed a lot of anger and frustration, Mm -hmm. but I don't know if that was taken into account. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard anything. Mm -hmm. So... (laughs) <laughs> it's, I mean, okay, but I, I want to now get also into something that you, you also did kind of mention at the start, right? Which is, you know, what are some of the big misconceptions that people have about mental health, especially in Singapore, right? And I'm, also, I'm sort of asking that from a personal position as well, right? Because I've 
I, again, I'm, I'm very lucky. I've never really had to deal with these things. Mm. And so I never gave it that much to- uh, thought until I had friends and relatives and people around me begin to deal with these issues, right? And on a serious, un- up to the point where it was doing serious damage, that's when I started thinking, okay, mm. okay, I need to know this stuff. I need to kind of know what to do in this situation. So what are the big misconceptions that people tend to have that they don't really think about because they're, you know, they're not dealing with these issues? Mm. So I see like two demographics, right? Mm-hmm. So one is like my parents' generation who don't even have a vocabulary of mental health. So I'll share this story about my mom, and she's given me consent to share this story. Um, so for years, like more than a decade, she used to complain about having like a stomachache. Mm-hmm. She'd be like, I have a stomachache. So we took her to the biggest doctors, you know, we were like, you know, what's going on? Like she got all these procedures done, but there was nothing wrong with her physically. Mm-hmm. And then someone suggested like, hey, maybe you should go to a psychiatrist. Turns out, This entire time, she had an anxiety disorder. And Mm. she just didn't have the vocabulary. or It wasn't even a thing to her Mm -hmm. to be like, you know, this is an anxiety disorder. and This is going to sound really dumb, but I didn't know that. Does that... So when you have very bad anxiety, it gets... Yeah, sometimes... That psychosomatic effects. Okay, wow. Yeah, so so there's there's that, right? There's Mm -hmm. that demographic. And then there's there are younger people, Mm -hmm. like ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Um... And even younger, who are so well versed in all of, like how to support your friend when they're in crisis, and you see all these infographics on Instagram, mm-hmm. on you know how to be an active listener, blah blah blah. Uh, but I think the biggest misconception is that people don't realize that everything is very individual. Mm-hmm. So you might have read and memorized all of these like guidelines and like infographics on how to. Um, tend to someone who is suicidal at this point Mm -hmm. but really what you have to do is to be present Mm -hmm. and to really just ask the person what they need and I think that's what people think there's it's a very simple problem and there's a solution but it's not like that it's 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 never in boxes Mm -hmm. it's always a very individualized response that people need Mm -hmm. and people's circumstances have a lot to do with it Mm Um, so a lot of um, things that I've received throughout my life has been like, you know, like you have everything what? Like, why, why are you so depressed? Mm-hmm. But it's, it's, it's not about that, you know. I'm in pain. So when you are like telling me, oh, but you have everything. You have a good job. You study so hard. Everything okay. Then why like that? Because look at the state of our world, mm-hmm. you know. Look at the state of... I cannot imagine a future for us sometimes, you know, as mm. as humankind. And that might seem as a very, like, abstract concept. Mm-hmm. But if you look at, you know, climate grief, climate change, you look at uh, the rise of fascism throughout the world, it is a very scary time to be alive. Mm-hmm. And these things affect us. These things affect young people. Mm-hmm. And I think being depressed and anxious, they're very valid reactions. Yeah. They're not disordered reactions. They, they seem very valid to me. I mean, if you're not afraid and if you're not anxious, are you okay? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm always very, um, I'm very confused by people who are like, oh, just be apolitical and kind of like glaze through life. I mean, um, their life allow them to do that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and just somehow waltzing through things as if like, privilege was not was not just there in the background but whatever okay i'm not gonna be salty on camera um what are the future plans for your hitler and yourself in fact how are you gonna continue this how are you gonna grow this this wonderful community or platform so this year has been really hard for us because of covid and because we don't get to be physically present with each other so it's been hard Mm -hmm. um but we have some exciting things coming up Mm -hmm. Uh, which I won't reveal, but uh, it, we are trying to bring something to the acti- activist scene in Singapore, mm-hmm. which we hope is valuable, which is like we are we are trying to really build activism around community care, mm-hmm. where we don't treat other activists as resources, you mm-hmm. know, to just get the job done, where we are not, re- where we don't treat each other terribly and take no accountability for our actions. Mm-hmm. A lot of these things happen in the activist scene, right? Um, where we... we we hold ourselves accountable for the harm that we've caused. Mm-hmm. And this is something that we're trying to model and we're trying to bring mm-hmm. to the table, I guess. That sounds very capitalist, but yeah. 
um, yeah, so we were trying to do a very transformative justice kind of thing, mm-hmm. but uh, in a very community accountability kind of way. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm just throwing out words now. Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's really like, um, yeah, just centering community care and healing justice mm-hmm. at the center of everything. Okay. Oh, okay, that's quite interesting. So, I mean... What, what do you sort of do you sort of have plans about the sustainability of this i mean what happens when you what, what happens when you leave what happens when you're gone you know how is this going to keep going or do you want it to keep going or what 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 do you have in store for it so a friend of mine recently told me that you know um the system works such that you know it will always keep going and when it's come to a stop it will end by mm-hmm. itself yeah so Building a community for me, it's not a business. Mm-hmm. It's a community. Mm-hmm. So if we still need a, need each other, we will always be here. Mm-hmm. And sustainability is not even an issue because like it's it to me it's such a corporate word because we're coming together as a community. We're having fun. So of course we, people will keep coming back, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So as long as you as the work is energizing, like I don't want for myself especially I don't want activism to be something like self-sacrifice you know like I'm staying up late nights and I'm doing this and I'm so tired how am I going to convince other people to be activists when I look like that Mm -hmm. I want it to be fun and I want it to be energizing and like Mm life-changing and that's what we are trying to make the community be and w- there are always people who come to us with like stuff they want to do, like projects they want to initiate, and we try and support in whatever way that we can. Mm-hmm. And these are the partnerships and collaborations and community that we want to build. So we think that the community will sustain itself as long as it's needed. Mm-hmm. So sustainability is not really a concern at this point. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, yeah, that, that, that makes sense to me. I mean, the only thing that I, I would think about is just sort of like, you know, does it does it ever run into sort of do you ever run into difficulties like the work that you put in to mm-hmm. edit the site to keep it up to design it right? I mean, there has to be somebody doing the back end. Mm. Um, you know, will there will there ever come a point where these things become a little bit too difficult? They clash with your schedule, and then this platform, you know, begins to fall by the wayside. You know, I know mm. the community is always going to be there, but your head la, I mean, from what I understand, it functions as a kind of mm. um, maybe loud halo or, excel or, 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 mm. or um, uh, a space for, for community to build and to grow, you know, in that accelerated sense, right? Mm. So, so I'm just sort of wondering, you know, the back end, the work that, that comes with any form of activism, right? Mm. The, I, I, I wonder if that might be, you know, difficulties sustaining it, keeping it going. Mm, I mean, that's always an issue, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we always come up, like, we always come against this. We are always asking ourselves, are we the space or are we the people? Mm-hmm. You know, is the work more important or is the people? For activism, everything is urgent and necessary all the time, mm-hmm. right? So, but because of our values, mm-hmm. we are always people first. Mm-hmm. So let's say we have to take a step back from publishing things online mm-hmm. because we are overwhelmed, the mm-hmm. team is overwhelmed, the community is overwhelmed. That's okay. Mm-hmm. No one is dying. That's mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. You know? It's not the end of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so the, the work ebbs and flows. Okay. Uh, yeah. But we believe the work is coming together. The mm-hmm. work is taking care of each other and we will never, like, we are never going to say that you know you have to give up your individual well-being just to put something out there mm-hmm. never that that goes against our values then we exist for what yeah <laughs> then we just go and work for corporate company la, mm-hmm. you know i yeah. mean that, that reminds me of that that you know some of the the ideas that have been coming out over the past couple of weeks which is that modern not modern activism but like activism nowadays right is happening on so many different platforms with so many different um ways and styles and methods right and there is a kind of flexibility to it there is that kind of ebb and flow which makes it a little bit um which makes it which gives it that extra sustainability that that makes it a little bit more dynamic right whereas you know you know traditionally when we think activism oh it's an institution there's sustainability there are costs and all that but now it's like that, that that is that there is that that ability for it to be simple and dynamic and flexible and to ebb and flow with the people who make up that type of activism. And the ebb and flow happens because of trust. Mm -hmm. You can take a rest Mm -hmm. when you trust that there will be other people out there doing the work, slowly Mm -hmm. chipping away at the systems. So with when you inculcate that kind of trust in yourself, in the community, Mm -hmm. that's when you can step back and be like, hey, I need to take some time out. Mm -hmm. And you can step back in Mm -hmm. when other people need to take a step back. 
love it wow yeah. you're blowing my mind <laughs> yeah. i mean i i you know as as someone trying to build uh, an activist organization i i'm starting to wonder whether i've been doing things the wrong way and sort of like reifying capitalist norms and ideals in how we're trying to you know become sustainable but also relentlessly grow and focus on these big overarching goals of trying to change how people understand and see Southeast Asia. But actually, you make such powerful points about, you know, that actually undermines the, the building that sort of culture within the organization, which is so uh, goal-focused rather than people-focused, actually undermines a big, cr- crucial part of what we're trying to do, um, which is an overturn the the dominant ideologies which are corrosive to our life but unthinkingly we may have been um, affirming some of those ideologies so uh you I know, mean, yeah. it's <laughs> difficult to resist right because yeah. that's what we know from the day we are born and that's what we internalize yeah um but the there's a there's a great initiative they're called black youth project uh 100 mm. and they have a, this quote which says that the that our movements are the practice grounds for the world that we're trying to build. Mm-hmm. So let's say we resist, 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 you know, we, the revolution is here and we like, you know, take down the structures. Mm-hmm. What's to say that we're not going to bec- replicate those structures? Because mm-hmm. it's internalized, yeah. right? And we don't know like what to reinstate in its place because we've never done it. We never tried. We were so focused on like revolution and like tearing Resisting, everything right? down, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. And that's why like imagination work is so important. Mm-hmm. Like just not just imagining a different way of being and working, but actually practicing it mm-hmm. because it's hard. Oh, like yeah. sometimes I just want to do a thing, mm-hmm. but my friends like you're tired, rest, and I'm just like no, I want to do the thing. But that's the capitalism, right? Mm-hmm. Like the internalized capitalism. Mm-hmm. I want to do the thing. I want to put it out. I want to create mm-hmm. um, at the expense of myself. Yeah. Um, so unlearning is is uncomfortable, mm-hmm. but that's where the value lies, and uh, also the outcome, right? Like sometimes I feel a bit paise because I'll be like, huh, I say you're headline here, there, you know, but then we only have two thousand followers on Instagram, so lousy. Then I'll be like. But those 2,000, they like engage, you know, mm-hmm. and they are our community and we are building community in a very intentional way. Mm-hmm. We're not trying to get numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, so numbers isn't the KPI. We, we have no KPIs. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, to even break out of that has been like a practice for me. Mm, yeah, 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 mm. yeah. I mean, that was that was that was one of the things like with um, with Wake Up Singapore as well, right? Sometimes we would see followers leave, right? Or and then we'd be like, oh no, why, why are the followers going? But then, mm. yeah, you know, the real thing is, are we engaging? Is our content actually getting better? Mm. Are people who uh, are engaged with our content, who are going to leave good comments and think pieces, are those people being provoked? Are they being engaged? Mm. And so, yeah, I, I actually really relate, right? Changing that marker to shift your eyes away from that sign, that number there towards actual quality, which is more intangible. I'm still learning that. I'm still learning that. Really, yeah. Um, but I mean, you you've kind of you've kind of walked into this 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 question a little bit already, right? But I want to get a little bit more into your overarching theory of change, right? And I don't mean anything overly theoretical. I don't mean anything too philosophical. I just mean, what do you think change is? How do you think it's gonna happen? And how do you think that it's it should happen? Okay, so I was thinking about this, right? And I think all of us have different parts to play in the change. Mm-hmm. Um, and my part, your Hitler's part, is community building, mm-hmm. is relationship building. Um, and essentially just rethinking the way we relate to each other, mm-hmm. um, finding different ways to live and be. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's what we are doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, like that is one way right and then there are different directions we need to push in all the directions there's like protesting there's art there is uh policy papers there is uh like channels like yours like you know um information spreading that new narrative does like all of this is important but i think for us we want to be the community that like holds everyone together and holds hands Mm -hmm. and then we'll be like "Uh you know it's it's less of the let's hold hands and sing songs but more about like where does the pain lie? Mm-hmm. Why are we hurting? Mm-hmm. Even when we are doing work that is resisting all these oppressive forces, mm-hmm. why are we hurting each other? Mm-hmm. You know, 
um, why is there so much violence in the movement itself? Why are we perpetuating this? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's where we come in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think it, it's, it's even more than that. You're, you're selling yourself a bit short because you're actually trying to uh, demonstrate and through the, you know, um, sort of develop a new way of thinking, a new ideology through which we can structure our lives and our communities, right, through the practice of it, uh, of, of what you're doing, that overturns the current uh, neoliberal capitalist consensus that has uh, come to govern our societies. You know, there's this whole, as, as we've been discussing, basis of uh, society now where your value is economic and your well-being is can be measured economically where if people their incomes rise they have more material they're materially better off then they're better off but what you're proposing is a very powerful rejection of that and demonstrating right is a powerful rejection of that uh, by placing um, well-being um, human well-being at the center of our society so the change that you're doing is not, you know, it's not just building the community, but demonstrating the viability of that community as uh, a way f- on which we can organize our societies. Mm-hmm. And that is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and this is a point in human history where we desperately need it, right? Capitalism, the crises that, that are around us, it's not just pandemic and climate. It's a crisis in capitalism. It's a crisis in democracy. It's a crisis in nationalism. We need different ways of organizing ourselves politically, economically, and socially. And you're demonstrating a very powerful way of doing it socially. And just sitting here listening to you, you know, I've, I've, already, I've already had my mind blown about things that I didn't even think about, and ideologies that I, I didn't realize I was affirming uh, or rejecting. And this is, this is incredibly powerful. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, that's the thing about neoliberal capitalism, right? Like, you cannot imagine a world without it. Yeah. So, we try, law. <laughs> we try. And we, we, make, we, make, we make mistakes, yes. you know? Yeah, we okay. make a lot of mistakes. And we make it okay to make mistakes, mm-hmm. you know? Which is also v- very important in a very punitive culture where you, like, you make mistakes, you're cancelled. You make mistakes, police come and catch you. Mm-hmm. Um, not just, like, outside, um, the activist scene but also inside mm-hmm. uh, but making mistakes is okay mm-hmm. it's okay you know let's make mistakes let's learn together so it's yeah it's mm-hmm. it's just something we're trying to do I guess so I guess I want to ask sort of a personal question here right which is you know right now running Wake Up Singapore and then in the future you know going to academia working with people working with teams and project groups right how can I make myself somebody that's more community centered, somebody that's more mental health centered? How can I bring that into the teams that I manage or work with? I mean, I think you can do that by. It's it's a very because I'm not gonna lie. It's a I'm I'm with PJ on this 100. percent It's a slightly alien concept to me. It doesn't come mm-hmm. naturally. I'm the chase KPI, chase the GPA. I want the numbers. I want the results kind of thing, you know. And that's just the way that it's been growing up in the Singapore education system. And I'm running up against some gritty gears right now trying to unlearn that. So how do I bring that into teams that I'm working with? I guess for me to really have been able to do that, I've had to experience that from mm-hmm. the people around me. So it, it cannot just be a single effort. Mm-hmm. You have to bring people on the same page. Yes. And the way... T- I, I don't know how to do that. I mean maybe the way to do that is to not be like how can I be more human centric and to just treat people like humans and not just like a project work member like we just we're so quick to just slot people into roles that they play in our lives Mm -hmm. but people are people you know like Mm -hmm. what is happening to a person in their lives Um, apart from that and just relating to a person like a person um, a thought exercise that I always like I like to do with like my friends is if the apocalypse it's already happening but if it were to happen right (laughs) now Mm -hmm. Like right now, you know, everything's gone Mm -hmm. and you're left with a group of people Mm -hmm. and you are the only people surviving in Mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. What will your role be in that space? What are you going to bring to that space? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, are you going to be the one like setting traps in the jungle to to catch prey? Mm -hmm. Um, Are you going to be the the medicine maker, the healer? Mm -hmm. You know, and to think of that, to think of our role in any kind of group setting or community setting that we are in Mm -hmm. is to to really like 
imagine an individual as part of a collective like that's what i like to do mm -hmm. to imagine more than like i'm trying to get this out of this community but like what what not what i bring to the table but what how am i in this space mm -hmm. you know how do i embody i mean it sounds very woo woo Mm -hmm. It sounds woo woo, right? But it's not. It's not. It's it's really about like thinking about how you embody a space. Like mm -hmm. what what do you bring to that space? How do you relate to each other in that space? Mm -hmm. How do you really see other people? Yeah. Like not just like you're my group work member today. You do page one tomorrow. I write abstract that kind. You know, it's not like that. Mm -hmm. it's just like how what do we have in common? What are our differences? And differences are great. You know, they mm -hmm. are they are generative. They yeah. so many things come out of differences and like. I mean, the, obviously, want to caveat that with like the difference is not that you're homophobic and you think my existence is wrong, lah. You mm. know, but yeah, like, how can we just come together? How can conflict be generative? How can we treat each other as more than just resources? Mm -hmm. How can we? And the thing is, like, it needs to be organic. Also, like, mm -hmm. it's not like if you are in my community, I must like you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just don't like people, and that's okay. Also, to honor that, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. I don't know. It's just returning to how to be human, right? <laughs> if if I can jump in, I mean, you, because very often when you when you hear uh, things like, uh, oh, if you were if the apocalypse was going to happen, what do you do? Or if you're going to die tomorrow, what do you do? And a lot of the time, the message people are sending is you're not being efficient enough in your day or in your time. Mm -mm. You know, you need to make every second count. Uh, or it's the law of the jungle and you've got to be ruthless. But what you're saying, and I think there's an important point to, to make for people who, who, who are, are listening, who uh, might not grasp this, is about how do we th rebuild civilization from the apocalypse in, in ways which, um, are, you know, w w which are collectively healthy. Um, mm. What is the civilization that we want to emerge from the apocalypse, and what's your role in it? Is that is that a better way of? I mean, not better, but a more. Is that an accurate reflection of, of what you're saying? Rather than you know, say an apocalypse is going to happen, so I need to learn how to kill. You know, my role is to kill. Mm -hmm. You know, but what you're saying is okay. If disaster happened and we need to rebuild human civilization, how do you contribute? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's what it is. I think we watch so many zombie movies, right? And then it's always about these few people and you have to fight everyone, you have to fight the zombies. But actually, you end up killing each other. That's mm -hmm. the way it happens, right? Like, because yes. of we are always like survival of the fittest. Like, you must steal other people's lunch, right? Yeah. But yeah. like, how do, you yeah. find yeah. how do you find lunch when you're stuck in a jungle together, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, someone has to catch the prey, someone has to... I mean, this is very abstract, but like, someone has to like, share it, someone has to cook it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's interdependence. Interdependence is how we survive. And that's a very scary thing to admit because we want to be independent and we want to fight other people. That's what individualism teaches us. Mm -hmm. But we, the truth is, we cannot survive without each other. Yeah. All right. I, I, I just have one last, one final question, right? And this has been bugging me the whole way through, which is, you know, you know, because there have been times where, where you know, I've been thinking, okay, I'm struggling with mental health issues, or I know people who are out there struggling with mental health issues, right? And there's a little bit of resistance, right? Mm -hmm. We, you know, these people may want to join the community. They may want to get in touch with somebody. They may want to seek help. But then how does one, like, enter that, right? How does one open up about these things, right? Is it, you know, there, there are all these considerations, like, is it safe? Mm. Is, it, is the information going to get out? Am I using the correct language? Mm. Can I claim that I'm depressed mm. if, like, I don't want to, you know, self-harm? You mm. know, like, where does the line come? That, all of these considerations. So how does that, how does one take that step? you know, to enter into that community. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. I think what you brought up is super important because mm. it illustrates how the narrative of mental health is also very binary. It's you are well and then you're suddenly not well. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and that was me for a long period of my life mm. where I was depressed for so long. But then I was just like, nah, but I never cut myself. So probably not depressed enough, you know, mm -hmm. like don't need to seek help. Mm -hmm. But I think we all need help mm -hmm. living in this world. Oh, yeah. I think we all need it. Like mm -hmm. living under capitalism, we all need help. Mm -hmm. So just normalizing that. Mm -hmm. And also like to to be a part of the mental health community. We are just a community. Don't know everybody has mental health. So I don't know what a mental health community is. Mm -hmm. Um 
But to be a part of a community, we don't just sit around and talk about depression. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's enough of that. Like, we are really living that, mm-hmm. right? Uh, we just come together and just be. We are meeting each other as people. Mm-hmm. So it's not really about, like, let me come here and find out about, like, schizophrenia. There are, there are spaces to do that, and that's important, but that's mm-hmm. not who we are. Yeah. Um, yeah, just meeting people as people, I mm-hmm. guess. Mm-hmm. And knowing that if you think you need help, you need help. You want help, you need help. Like, as in, it's okay to ask for help. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be super depressed. It's not oppression Olympics, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, then if we really think like that, then you just have to be the most oppressed person in the world to get any help. Mm-hmm. But we are, we're all at different peop- stages. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's... So, so what you're saying is, Sean, it's, it's not just about entering a community. Mm-hmm. It's actually transforming the communities you're already in. Mm. Because this shouldn't be a mental health community. Mm. It should be normalize for everyone everywhere mm-hmm. like that's kind of a, a theme of this episode where actually it's it's you know we have this conception of a separate space when actually it should be pervasive and we should all be behaving in these ways which are supporting each other and affirming each other and and so um you know it's uh to come back to your question john it's not about entering community but transforming the communities you're in mm-hmm. and i think that's a very that's actually a very powerful idea uh to realize that uh this is not separate from who we are at any given time uh but no matter which community you're in your family your friends your company um you can transform that and help begin to transform that mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's uh, like turning turning yeah. that um, conception yeah. is really important. Yeah. So I mean, as somebody that's like really quite clueless, as you get tell, how do I begin um, sort of changing that? How do I begin overturning that narrative? Like, you know, I th- I feel like okay, there have been people who've come up to me and said, "Hey, I'm feeling a certain way. Mm. I don't know if I should get help." And I just look kind of blankly at them, like. Oh, oh no! <laughs> like what? What? You know how? Mm. How does one? How does like a, let's say a neurotypical person? How does somebody who, mm. who you know hasn't really been forced to deal with with many of the issues out there? Um, how does a person like that sort of engage? How do they be mm. there for someone? I mean, if you're asking on a very interpersonal level, mm-hmm. I think it's always important to think about our positionality. Mm-hmm. So. Like you said, like if you are a neurotypical person who has, hasn't been through these things, mm-hmm. um, first is to go within mm-hmm. and to think about why haven't I faced these things? Mm-hmm. Like, what are the privileges that I have? Oh, I'm straight up male. I mean, like, <laughs> it, yeah, it's it's privilege, straight up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. And other and to not just think of that in an abstract, but mm-hmm. to think of that when you step into a community, right? Mm-hmm. Like. I am a man, mm. therefore, in this space, even if there are equal n- uh, numbers of like men and other genders, mm-hmm. um, men are automatically going to have a stronger voice mm-hmm. because that's how we're all conditioned, yeah. right? So to, to actively take a step back, mm-hmm. to let people who are marginalized do the talking, mm-hmm. like it's not about amplifying voices. Everybody has voices. Mm-hmm. Let the voices come out, yes. you know? Mm-hmm. And if someone's coming to you, don't know if I should seek help, then... Just seek lah. What's the worst that could happen, mm-hmm. right? You just try it. If it doesn't work, mm-hmm. then it's okay. I'm still here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it's just about trial and error, which is life, really. Mm-hmm. Trial and error. Activism also, mm-hmm. trial and error. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I can offer some, you know, from new narratives perspective, it's several things, you know, first, I think reads what you said about understanding yourself because um, to understand that you yourself, you're, you're not perfect, that you have issues to mm-hmm. deal with, right? Admitting your own vulnerability is a very powerful first step. So mm-hmm. actually to anyone listening, I'd say if you really want to create change, it has to start from within, mm-hmm. you know? And then um, once you do that, you're going to open yourself up to all sorts of other possibilities. Um, and then for new narrative, the a major turning point was actually um, someone in the organization who was very open about her mental illness, but also very passionate about helping other people understand that and then nurturing mm-hmm. that, right? Uh, you know, again, we, we take on a lot of responsibility on ourselves as activists. Like, I got to change everything about the world. Mm-hmm. But sometimes maybe it's not you that's going to change it. 
but rather someone else who has that understanding or capability and then you help empower that person. Mm -hmm. So as managing director, right, um, I, I really tried to empower uh, my colleague to transform the company from within to create these sort of uh, structures, um, to create an environment, you know, to do very simple things, uh, but then also create very deep-seated institutional pathways um, for people to acknowledge these issues, for people to seek help, for people to be to have, to trust each other, to be vulnerable with each other, right? To transform the the values of the organization and put those first. Mm. So uh, yeah, I think that's from from new narratives perspective. Um, that's that's how we've gone about it, mm. um, and of course I know we have a long way to go, but um, yeah, I think it 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 uh, it's very important to do. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? Exactly what you said. Like know your range. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like sometimes you don't have to be at the forefront of doing all the changes. Mm -hmm. Some people are more equipped to do that, mm -hmm. but also not placing all the burden on marginalized people to do all of that work. Mm -hmm. And how can you like carry that work as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, while letting them like lead the work. Yeah. I think that's important. I think my, my final thought here is that, you know, I'm, 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 I, 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 my mind has sort of started to shift, which is that I think you, you could hear like a lot of the questions that I was asking was like, how do I do this? How do I do that? It was like very pragmatic. And I'm thinking about, actually it's really context dependent, mm -hmm. right? It's just putting that individual first, putting, um, community first, putting the individual and their well-being first. And it's not so much about a set of rules, but rather a direction or a framework to see every context as well-being comes first. And that's how the context is going to be played out and interpreted. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's a whole perspective shift for me. So yeah, I and mean, it's also you. about like looking inside. Yeah. Like, what do you need as an individual? Mm -hmm. What would you like? What kind of support would you need? I mean, your headline started like that. I would go on Insta mm -hmm. and I would post Insta stories about how I was having a terrible time. Mm -hmm. And I would, I cope with humor, so I would just make it funny. And then people would just be like, oh my God. And then people started opening up. And I'm just like, ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, this is way too much for me to carry as a person. So I was like, let me create a community so we can actually just come together, mm -hmm. you know? So I think being vulnerable is good, but also, like, that shouldn't be... As in, I'm, I also want to be careful because, like, a lot of people expect to consume trauma from marginalized people before they want to be in relationship with them, so that's not right. Uh, but, yeah, just starting from ourselves, being like, what do I need? What am I struggling with? Mm -hmm. You know, and things like that, mm -hmm. I guess. Can I ask, so I, I have a question about transnational solidarity, Right, and have you thought about how we build these communities across borders, especially borders which have been imposed upon mm -hmm. us? Um, and maybe there's an inherent conflict because you want a community which is a lot more face-to-face. -face. Uh, you know, you've talked about the value of everyone coming together in person, so it becomes very hard to transcend boundaries and borders. But at the same time, borders itself is also a form of violence imposed upon us to restrict how we act and behave and think. Mm -hmm. And um, there are so many valuable things that I have uh, you know, learned or been able to draw upon because New Narrative is a, is a regional company um, and uh, learn from so many people other, you know, throughout the region. And in particular... Um, my therapist is based in Malaysia and I pay a hundred ringgit per hour. <laughs> That's <laughs> so that, great. So there's a already a huge difference there just on the, the drain on resources, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, that's actually, I was, you know, from the moment you said, um, you know, $240 an hour in Singapore, I, I was like, wow, that is a huge amount. Um, if you just, like everything else, you go across to Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> Even medication, I've yeah, heard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, fortunately, I don't need medication. Uh, so I, you know, because that will be controlled on the national level. Mm, that's true. But I guess my broader question is like, transboundary solidarity, is that something you're considering? Is that some, how would you, you build that into the community you're trying to build? That's the dream, yeah. right? Mm. Um, I mean, everything that I have, I'm learning here because I feel like there are not a lot of models here which I have seen like in Singapore. So everything that I'm learning 
continually over the past few years have been through webinars and through activists in various spaces who are doing abolition work, who are doing transformative justice work, you know, and I've been learning from them. So to build community with them is, um, would be amazing. I, I, we still have to think about that. I mean, that's like the dream. Uh, but yeah, that to, to kind of exchange this knowledge and, and build together, that'd be amazing. That would be how capitalism ends. Mm. So yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so thank you so much, Reese. This has been a fantastic hour. I have learned so much, had my mind blown, reconsidering many things, especially when you just said, you know, activism should be fun. And then I thought back on the past couple of months uh and and definitely ever since that police raid on on yeah. on me you know mm. that was uh very traumatizing mm. um but uh i i kind of have lost sight of that fact so i feel like uh you know you've you've reminded me of certain important things which i which i had forgotten about and of course as a as a leader that then affects everyone else in the organization when it seems like i'm not having fun and i'm you know grumpy or mopey or, or sad or whatever it definitely affects everyone else. Um, so, you know, for that alone, I want to thank you. But then on top of that, you've really given us so much information um, and I think really helped a lot of people think very differently about um, a lot of things, especially how we build our, our communities. So, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Um, and of course, thank you, Sean, uh, my co-host. Yeah, it was questions. a complete perspective change. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 one of the the, the 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 areas which you know, admittedly, I would say I have not looked at very much, right? And it's one of those things that, you know, I'd say sometimes doesn't come up that much in activism, mm -hmm. right? The 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 mental toll. I mean, at least in in my circle, right? We we tend to kind of um, put it to the side. We think about oh, the greater good, getting the job done, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, the, 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 but the things that keep us going are really that those small times where we get together and we laugh and we say, hey, you know, we came, we've came a long way. We did, we did, you know, oh, look at this questionable meme. We have drinks, we have fun. And then that's, that's the origin of everything. But we don't focus on it. We don't realize how important those things are because our eyes are always on the prize. It's always on the numbers. It's on the next goal and milestone that we're going to reach. So you've really inverted that, you flipped that for me. And I, mean I mean, like the forces against us that mm -hmm. we are fighting are already going to make it very not fun for <laughs> us, right? Like PJ just went through that and that was terrible. And yeah, it's, so if we also make it not fun for ourselves, then we do for what? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. if like survival is already so hard because we are living on the terms of capitalism, we are living on the terms of cis heteronormativity and all of these things, right? Mm -hmm. Then if we just perpetuate that, then what's the point? Like, let's create spaces where we can survive and resist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. Cool. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, and thank you, as always, to all of you tuning in, watching, listening. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you've enjoyed what you've heard, please do go to newnarrative.com for more stories from around Southeast Asia. Listen to our sister podcast, Southeast Asian Dispatches, for more news, interviews, and commentary from around Southeast Asia. Check out New Narrative, uh, newnarrative.com slash hello. Join, please do join as a member, newnarrative.com slash join or donate at newnarrative.com slash donate. Thank you, everyone, and see you next time.